Today we're going to check out Blackstar's 2021 ID Core version 3. They came out with the ID Core series a while back. In fact, it was one of the first stereo dual speaker practice amps on the market, especially one that made a huge splash like this did. And they've updated a couple times and this is the third iteration. And I wanted to check it out because obviously last year we saw some really big amps uh, come in the market. In other words, big being big players, the Spark being probably the biggest in last year's market. But obviously with the Katana stuff, the Spark, and, uh, and of course the Yamaha stuff, where does this sit in there and, it, and where should you be considering it if you're looking at buying it? What updates did they did that's worth having and what updates did they miss? The first thing I wanna talk about is some of the things they did that were really cool. Now, the aesthetic is probably one of the first things you'll notice. They upgraded the grill cloth or changed it from black to silver. I really think it gives it a much cleaner, better aesthetic. It less, makes it look less like a Bluetooth speaker, more like an actual guitar amp. The other thing they did that was interesting was they used to have a strap that went over the top and that's how you carried it. It was kind of like a, a thin guitar strap. And although it wasn't bad by any means, it's uh, been removed and an updated new plastic molded handle in the back. And because the amp's kind of light, you can just pick it up with one hand and go. Now another feature they added was this new live streaming interface feature. Now what that means is uh, that it has an output on this and you can plug it into your Droid uh, device, your iOS device. And what that allows you to do is get not only a line out from the amp, but with the cab simulations. And of course it's ready to go. You don't need an extra interface to get it into those mobile devices. And reason why you would want that is let's say you want to stream a performance on your favorite uh, platform. You could just plug that into your device, put it on a tripod stand and start playing. Now the downfall is you have no mic. So there's no way to talk to the audience, um, but at least it has that feature. And I think another feature is if you had an idea, a song idea, you could plug it in your phone and record yourself playing it, get a really nice recording of it and get some video of your playing. The only thing to note is you will need a TRRS cable to connect it to your audio device, but you can find them on Amazon. What they didn't add, which I was shocked to see was Bluetooth. I don't necessarily want Bluetooth or need Bluetooth, but I thought it was gonna be a, a kind of a new thing considering it was on so many of the other devices. The one thing I wanna point out is even though it doesn't have Bluetooth, you can still plug in a audio device through an eighth inch cable through the uh, line input and play music. And it does have the ability to USB connect to your computer. Now, that being said, it also doesn't cost as much as all the devices that are Bluetooth. At this one at the 20 watt version, about $180, and you can get the 10 watt, which has all the same features. That one's about $150. And then if you need something a little louder, you can get the 40. Now, I want to tell you, since I have a Spark that's 40 watts and this 20 watt, I will tell you this is comparable to the Spark. So I don't think you need the 40 watt version of this to get as loud as the Spark. They're about on par with how loud they are. And uh, so this is where I think you should sit if you're looking for something comparable to that. Another option this amp has that's really impressive is it has a foot switch. Now it doesn't come with the foot switch, but you can get a foot switch, plug it in and actually change channels on the amp. And that's impressive because that's another thing you can't do on the Spark. And like I said, I really like that amp, but I just want to point out the features you can and cannot do with each one. Plus, like I said, this one's less expensive. The thing they didn't update on this amp, which I was really shocked, and I hope if Blackstar sees this video, they really pay attention. They didn't go to USB-C. That is, I think, a huge mistake. They should have went to USB-C because I don't have this cable, so I can't demo the computer interface with you. I went looking and I couldn't find one of these old cables. I think it's just because all my equipment is updated. I just don't have one laying around anymore. I thought I did and I, I couldn't find it. I was hoping to find one in the garage. So it doesn't come with that cable either. In the future, I definitely think they should update this USB-C. You just have to be aware that you're gonna have to have the older style cable and you can still plug in. Now, if you do have that cable, you can plug into your computer or your laptop and not only use this as an interface to record with using the tones from the amp, or you can use their new architect software to actually change all the tones and sounds in the amp, including adding the three band EQ. Plus they're gonna give you 15 impulse responses. So that's different speakers and cabinets, microphones and rooms, and they're doing all that at a lower price point and a very intuitive software to get somebody who's not really tried this into it. Travel, yeah, that's right. You can travel with this because you can buy an optional battery that they sell for it. So you can buy that battery and take this and maybe go busking, travel with it, have it wherever you go. And keep in mind, now that your phone obviously has its own battery and this has its own battery, that's where you could also interface, share ideas, uh, live stream with it and do, it, uh, do whatever you like as well. But all of that doesn't matter unless it sounds good. So let's get into the sounds. They say they've improved the sounds. And to be honest with you, I used to have this amp in the V1 series and I, it was years ago and I remember liking it. And after playing this one, I think it's, I, I, I also like this one. I don't notice anything like severely better, but 
uh, I didn't think anything was wrong with the first one. I'm running a little gain, so let's, let's chill that gain out. And this is a good time to mention. So you have the gain, you have volume, and you have this EQ. And the EQ is also called ISF. It doesn't just change the EQ, it changes the attack. They're basically trying to uh, liken it to a British sound and an American sound, like a uh, 6L6 tube versus an EL34 tube. <laughs> Let's get that volume up a little bit. Really loud. Now, the other feature that's really cool on this amp is that you have effects. So this is the reverb and you can select different reverbs. So here's one. Here's another one. There you go. More of a standard kind of reverb. Now the next setting I want to go into is the crunchy setting. And this is more of the rock, kind of contemporary rock setting. So now let's go to the last setting or the heaviest gain setting. I just want to show you what that's like. I'm going to go ahead and peg the gain out pretty hard and take this reverb out. Let's take that out. Little bit of delay. And we're going to take this delay to about here. Let's see. <laughs> Final thoughts on the amp are pretty simple. I think if you're looking for a, a good practice amp uh, for the home or uh, for travel, I think this would work. Ultimately, I still like it. I like the first series. Um, I never really tried the second series, but I gotta say, I like this as much as the first series. Aesthetics, I think, are improved. I wish they would have fixed the USB cable, uh, uh, but, you know, hey, it's not the end of the world. And again, it's just a just something to mention. And uh, other than that, I think they did a great job. And I think it's a, a great contender out there for a little practice amp. As always, I want to thank you guys so much today. To the next time, know your gear.